So, after standing in for Benny in This Week in Tumblr and covering kink critical feminism, I've sort of got a little bit of blood in my mouth, and I think we need to explore this particular group a little more because some of what they say is incredibly harmful, is incredibly shaming, and I honestly think it might prevent those in the community from reaching outside the community when they do experience abuse and abusive relationships because when they turn outside the community they're told that what they're doing was horribly wrong to begin with so let's see exactly how horrific some of these people can be to start with we have sprinkle cunt she's on fleek or so she believes she starts out with kinksters put their lives on display by writing books making films and running blogs dedicated to the virtues of the kink community rad femmes what you're doing is problematic and here's about large number scientific studies and personal stories explaining why kinksters what we're doing is private and you have no right to judge well if it's private and informed consent is involved then yeah nobody has any right to judge you and oh look what you're doing is problematic and here's about no studies cited but you sure claim there are a bunch oh and look anecdotal evidence because that makes a difference you're not on fleek you're, you're accomplishing nothing except for being an ignorant shaming individual and you're not being inclusive you're not supporting people that might be reaching out to you and trying to get you know a balanced perspective on BDSM here we have argirials.tumblr.com a 21-year-old pagan forest dweller from Scandinavia. So I'm guessing she knows a lot about society and, and social culture living in a forest. Here's a news flash. The majority of kinksters, especially cishet white dudes, or cis, sorry, cishet dudes, are disgusting, holier-than-thou creeps who think their right to have a sexual preference is more important than the safety of women, sexual abuse survivors, and minors. Citations? Maybe press a not hole. Nope, no citations. So, I would like to know where you get your information that the majority of kinksters, especially cishet dudes, are A, disgusting, B, holier than thou creeps, or C, think their right to have a sexual preference is more important than the safety of women, sexual abuse survivors, and minors. I'm a sexual abuse and relationship abuse and IPV abuse or IPV and domestic violence survivor and you're being condescending and ignoring my safety or my healing by telling me that I'm not allowed to engage in consensual kink in an attempt to work out my issues. Nice to see that uh, listening to the trees has done a good job of educating you about much anything. Caravaggio.tumblr.com. They don't want their best dressed day in a casket. Oh. Uh, teenager, Christian, justice, cartoons, fashion, makeup, hair. Before you judge me, try hard to love me. Well, you're not loving anybody here, so you don't get a right to judge them either by your own words. Is BDSM Tumblr ever going to acknowledge that the community is overrun by white men, citation needed, who want to dominate and degrade others, citation needed? inside the bedroom because dominating and degrading others outside the bedroom isn't enough citation needed or no all right in order the the community is not overrun by white men i'm not sure where you are but it's not overrun by white men there are lots of other groups involved in bdsm uh, i know multiracial homosexual couples that are, have bs or ds dynamics in their relationships i know lesbian couples that have DS dynamics um, dominate and degrade others former male submissive I know many other male submissives hetero and homosexual dominating and degrading others outside the bedroom isn't enough what are you basing this on that's an apex fallacy assuming that because some small group of people at the top are white means that all other whites and males are automatically privileged by their existence. Sorry, doesn't cut it. No argument, no citation. Get lost. Angryfeminism.tumblr.com 
because this is going to be so unbiased and so constructive. 17-year-old Viet Rad Femme, that's pretty angry about everything. Well, if you're angry about everything, you need to consider some anger management courses. Starting off with ad hominem, which potentially uh, a derivative of genetic fallacy here, assuming that the validity of a claim or argument based on the source is worth dismissing. Kinksters really lack critical thinking skills. Citation needed. Every kinkster I'm friends with is a member of the atheist community and is generally quite smart and prides themselves on critical thinking skills. Moving on, like, okay, sure, let's pretend you guys are two consenting adults. There may be a thin veil of consent, but you're still sexualizing violence. Why does beating women turn you on? Why does violence turn you on? Like, really, think about. Well, you left us hanging, because there's no conclusion to that final statement. But why does beating women turn you on? Or why does anybody get involved in any kind of kink? You're ignoring role play. You're ignoring impact. Well, no, you're getting impact play. You're ignoring bondage, shibari, breath play, pet play, uh, mummification play, pet play in general. Like, I mean, just no. You, not all BDSM is about beating women. I was a former male submissive. Gonna keep harping on that. I'm gonna beat that drum a while because apparently none of you get it that not all white men are at the top. Again, no citations. Oh, here's the sanity piece in the middle. Humanist gra humanities graduate. Cliche leftism just to be cool. Into linguistics, knitting, half-hearted anorexia recovery, feminism, enjoys Thai food, feminist prose, angry girl music of the indie rock persuasion, hates anti-SJ humor, James Franco and Olives. Well, can't please everybody. Ultimately, my biggest problem with saying all BDSM is abuse, aside from the fact that it is objectively untrue, is that it blurs the extremely thick line between consensual BDSM and abuse masquerading as BDSM, which can actually prevent consensual participants from recognizing abuse if it does happen to them. I'm going to raise my hand here. My former relationship with my former dom was my first DS relationship. I was unaware of any of what went into it, and we went, we learned as we went along. It was an entirely organic relationship, meaning that I had no context within which to judge the increasingly narcissistic and abusive behavior that developed as the relationship went on. I had no concept of how to judge that compared to any other relationship, because I'd never been in a DS dynamic, nor had I ever dealt with a narcissist. This is especially true if the anti-BDSM crowd has made them feel ashamed for their sexual desires, because that's one of the things that leads people to blame themselves for their own assaults. Do you get it, and kink, get a, kink critical feminists? Blaming people for their desires may lead them to consider themselves responsible for their own assaults. I've seen this happen, for example, in fundamentalist communities, and cloaking your judgmental bullshit in second-wave re feminist rhetoric doesn't change the implications. If kink criticism is really about protecting people from abuse, you need to change your fucking methods right damn now. This woman gets a cookie or a gift certificate for Thai food because she gets this shit. She understands what the fuck is going on. MacaroniOverlord.tumblr.com likes politics, mostly social issues, and societal problems, is a feminist, activist, pro-choice, inactivist, coffee drinker, and wants to help change the world. Bitch, you're not changing the world on Tumblr. I hate to be the one to break it to you. I don't actually focus my kink shaming on women who like to be degraded. I focus my critical thinking on the systems in place that make people think they're supposed to like that shit. Because everybody that likes to be degraded is a female. Really. Are we going to harp on this some more? You will shame the shit out of people who get off on degrading and harming other people? Well, guess what? Your judgmental bitchiness is ignorant and self-centered. You don't like it, therefore you cry about it. Stop it. Let people have their informed consent and sexual agency. Or is that not relevant anymore, Ms. or Mrs. Feminist? Judgmental ignorant, ignorant people. God. 
moving right along, we have Commander Lexoth... I'm not even going to try. They call themselves smart but harmless, heartless. They don't want to be a legend. Oh, wait, that's a goddamn lie. They do. It's an interesting background, though. I'm Kind of neat. But, here we go. One of the most offensive things about the claim that kinksters can't help their kinks, they're born that way, is that it absolutely, completely, perfectly aligned with... It's completely aligned with and in agreement with patriarchal beliefs about gender. All right, first problem. Feminists will frequently claim that sexuality is innate. It is ingrained prenatally. That a person is born with their position on the sexual or the, 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 the sexuality spectrum. And patriarchy theory, I'm going to beat that drum again. I can deconstruct that shit in 30 seconds or less and explain the deconstruction in under three minutes, explaining why it's misogynist, misandrist, it's uh, it's bigoted towards the elderly, the prepubescent, it's transphobic, it's homophobic, and it's non-intersectional, non-inclusive, and ignorant fucking garbage. Moving on, the majority of doms are male and the majority of subs are female. Citation needed. So if we are to accept the kinkster's way of thinking, then we must believe that men are naturally more dominant than women and women are naturally more submissive than men. Well, based on kyriarchal labor division and kyriarchal roles, as developed through our evolutionary process, getting to the point where we have Tumblr to bitch about this shit, men were risk positive and women were risk negative because the ideal strategy for procreational success and evolutionary success, in our species at least, was to protect the gestating partner and the offspring. I know this is going to be difficult to understand, but if a hundred thousand years ago the gestating partner, the female, had been risk positive, they would have been killed much more frequently, which would have retarded our evolutionary progression and our evolutionary success. That women enjoy being dominated by men because it's in their nature to be dominated. No, it's not necessarily so. However, men tend to be more aggressive and more risk positive. Not, they're more competitive. Does not necessarily mean a, it's bad. Ancestrally, it meant that men that were competitive and aggressive and risk positive and could make those risks pay off developed more resources and were more likely to procreate because they were effective providers and protectors, which meant that they were more likely to attract mates. That women can't choose to not subordinate themselves because it's who they are. Again, I'm going to beat on this drum. Former male submissive to a, fo a female. It's a bunch of regressive, misogynistic bullshit that feminists have been fighting against for decades. Citation needed. What have you, what have you been fighting for decades? Bullshit. I want to see evidence that there has been kink-critical feminism for decades. I could buy maybe two. Maybe two decades. Possibly. But you're being misogynistic by denying legitimately submissive females their right to informed consent and sexual agency. You're being misandrist for assuming that all men are out to dominate. Stop it. You're sucking at being a feminist. Back to Ask a Rad Fem. Anonymous asks, what do you think of BDSM activities? I have had been under the impression, which of course might be a wrong one, that radical feminists tend to not be very BDSM positive. That's true. Could you explain why or direct me to materials on this topic? Radical feminists are not BDSM positive. We are kink critical. Some call themselves kink negative. BDSM sexualizes abuse, rape, pedophilia, slavery, bestiality, and a myriad of other things, and the sexualization of these things contributes to the normalization of these things. Before y'all lose your shit, consensual does not equal ethical. Well, that's a pretty strong set of arguments. Um, BDSM does not sexualize abuse in particular. I'm sorry if you don't understand that a little bit of spanking is not abusive. I mean, really? Pedophilia? Really? Citation needed. Slavery? You might have an argument there, but it could just be reinforcement of kyriarchal 
dynamic. Bestiality, citation needed. Sexualization of these things contributes to the normalization of things. No, BDSM does not contribute to rape culture. Rape culture functions on the theory that one in five women will be raped or sexually assaulted, when in the U.S., CDC results demonstrate that it's about one in 53, which is too many, but that's not one in five. So no, and consensual does not equal ethical. I'm sorry, informed consent. No, no, you still want to deny informed consent and sexual agency? Well, stick to being a rad femme because you're sucking at being a feminist. Like Tears in the Rain, which is under huntressmoon.tumblr.com. Little reminder, being kink critical doesn't just fall under the purview of radical feminism. Really? Because it's just rad femmes that seem to be kink critical. There isn't just liberal feminism and radical feminism. No, there, you're right about that. There's a lot more. Not all rad femmes are TERFs. Well, all of the kink critical ones fall into at least some of the behaviors that TERFs exhibit. Oh, buy your soap. Great. Nice tie into to uh, Fight Club. I really trust you even more now. This is not feminism. You are not causing people to step out of their comfort zone. Being kink critical is no different than being a victim blamer to me. Sorry. Little, uh, what's this? Alligatoremoji.tumblr.com. Little alien. Your name is Owen. They prefer the third person. They love cute things and scary things. I'm a, I'd probably scare the shit out of you. Fuck your kinks, I hate them. Well, fuck your kink critical bullshit because you've got no reason to hate on other people that aren't involving you in anything. What people do at home, none of your fucking business. Stop kink shaming for no good goddamn reason. Stop crying about it, please, and thank you, Owen. Southern Feminist... Fez, ah, southernfeminism.tumblr.com I'm Zoe, and this is my old blog. I'm currently turning this page into a social activism network. Yeah, because Tumblr needs more of that. I can now be found at Zoe ben, zoebenfield.com Remember when someone sent me this really long message about how I shouldn't be kink critical because Fifty Shades of Grey is just fan fiction and doesn't properly represent the BDSM community? As if Fifty Shades of Grey was the only thing that makes you critical of kink. Well, I like that big long list that you didn't provide. Totally explains why you're critical of kink. And you know what? I've been in the kink community. Fifty Shades of Grey was could be more accurately titled Fifty Shades of an Abusive, Narcissistic, Sociopathic Stalker and a Naive Virgin. So you know what? It doesn't represent the BDSM community. Not even a little bit. Using that as some sort of defense for your shaming of people's informed consent and sexual agency, not really a defense. Sorry, doesn't work. I don't know, man. Okay, geez. I think. .tumblr.com. I blog about sex and depression. Submissive, queer, 23, Michigan. I, I have no idea why this is even listed as kink critical. Like, I'm somebody wanted a fucking tattoo. Fuck off. This is not this is not kink critical. You think it's a bad tattoo? That's fucking amazing. Maybe they didn't. You're an idiot. Back to wisecrack. Woo. This blog probably defies logic and good taste. Yeah, it still does. Kink critical, fifty shades of shit, pretending they're oppressed again. Warning, safe for work, BDSM, kinkster, protest of Fifty Shades of Grey, with so, some in full leather and masks, so right lies, bad spelling, ignorance. Let's play everything wrong with this picture. Let's do that. Let's open that shit up. Yeah, I see nothing wrong with any of this. Sorry, what, what's your argument? Um... If they took off the mask, they'd be fired, they'd lose custody, their childhood was fine. She's a dom? Well, great, she's a dom. His family would disown him. Fifty Shades of Grey does not represent the community. Most men in S&M are submissive. Stop stereotyping women as submissive and men as dominant. I'm kinky because I like it, not to please a man. S&M is we love differently. That's somebody's daughter. Look at that. Look at that. People actually owning their sexuality, just like feminism wants. I'm going to say it again. Ignorant. Bigoted. Fools. And that concludes...
as much as I can take for now of kink critical feminists on Tumblr. I'm sure I could find more elsewhere, but uh, fact remains that uh, I can only I can only stomach so much. Forgot to stop and get some alcohol before I got to this, so I didn't have anything to numb the intellectual wounds that were going to be opened by the. I'm not even sure what to call it. I I don't think any single word suf is sufficient to fully explain what these people are doing. I mean, bigoted certainly qualifies. Ignorant certainly qualifies. Uneducated or misinformed both probably qualify quite aptly in many cases. Here's the thing, folks. I don't care if you're into kink. I don't care if you think it's positive or negative. What I want to see is that you engage for yourself in an informed manner and that you own your sexuality, you own your agency. If you don't want to be kinky, don't be kinky. If missionary is, is enough for you, that's great. If a gangbang is what you want, or bukkake, or whatever, whatever it is, don't care. What you want to do, that's up to you, because you know what? You, as an adult, ideally fully capable of informed consent, can decide how, when, why, and what you will engage in and you will exercise informed consent and sexual agency and personal agency throughout your life instead of letting somebody else tell you what is acceptable or unacceptable I did it I know other people that do it that's what feminism purports to be about and as we've just demonstrated so many of them are so incapable of understanding that you're supposed to be giving people the opportunity to live their own lives. But hey, that's clearly what feminism is about. Being our big sister babysitter. Bigoted assholes. <laughs>